monster. I'm your number one fan, 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 fan. Now clear your minds. You know what scares you? It has from the very beginning. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Put the zombies and enter the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Midnight Monster Corner Podcast. I'm your host as always, Corey, and alongside me is my good pal, Tony. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. How you been? I've been good. I've been good. Been uh, getting back into the swing of things, you know, work and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I was out for a little while with COVID. I think we talked about that last week, but I'm kind of starting to get back into the swing of things a little bit. Uh, nothing uh, like back into the swing of things. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little bit better because there for a while, like, not only was I out for, like, COVID and shit like that, but it it, it was crazy because, like, it, there was, like, some holiday and then I was out again and then, you know, then we had too, we had too many parts at work and so they canceled work on us and it's just, like, one thing after another and I just couldn't get enough hours. It was crazy. Yeah, so you start out of the work swing and you got to get acclimated <laughs> back to it. Yeah, I'm getting back into the swing of things, so it's a good feeling. Yeah, <laughs> it's good when you get the hours back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, it was uh, it hurt me a little. <laughs> couldn't uh, couldn't buy the cigars. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta have those, man. <laughs> gotta have uh, on, honestly, I've been giving my lungs break and stuff since COVID, so that's the reason why I'm not smoking my cigars right now. I'll be, I got, I got some of them, so we're good. Yeah, most, most of the people that have been with us from the beginning and stuff like that are probably like, I wonder why he's not smoking. Well, there you go. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, definitely took a toll on me. Yeah. <laughs> but so I'm, I'm slowly but surely getting better. I still get a little winded, believe it or not, but, uh, for the most part, not too bad. Okay. Good deal, bro. Yeah. Good deal. yeah, I'm just, like I said, relaxing the lungs. Eventually I'll be getting back into my. My old habits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, you uh, you excited about this episode? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is our our second installment for indie horror. I'm I'm really curious to see what you got. We haven't we haven't talked about this at all. We try to we try to refrain from uh, spilling the beans and, and letting letting the other know what we are covering for this episode. So it's going to be a surprise to me. It's going to be a surprise to you. It should be pretty fun. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, you want to, you want to dive into it? Yeah, sure. I'm going to let you go first. I went first last time. Okay. That, yeah, that's cool, man. <laughs> um, so last time we, we were talking on the podcast, I mentioned a certain filmmaker who um, I just wish you you know, we could hear more from and, and who would come back and start directing again. And, you know, when I mentioned that and stuff like that, I could think, you know, afterwards, I was like, well, I, I, maybe I should just cover his film on the next episode. So I ended up going that route. Um, and I went up or I ended up covering um, 2012's The Sleeper. Ooh. I wanted nice. to cover this one because um, Justin Russell is, is one of those guys where he's, he's such a talent um behind the camera and i just it, it pains me that he's not doing anything else right now or mm-hmm. currently um because i think he could his output if he continued filmmaking would would just be tremendous i really do he's got a good eye for for um for uh horror films and and aesthetic and 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 cinematography and um he he really and that's Going into this film, I mean, the basic premise is you have a uh, sorority camp, sorority camp, excuse me, sorority house massacre Mm -hmm. sort of slasher film where you have a uh, killer who's stalking sorority girls in a sorority house, a la, you know, Black Christmas or a slew of films that came out in the 80s that that pretty much tagged along with that and and kind of took that premise and ran with it. Um, But this is this is like a throwback film to that. For that, for those mm-hmm. years, um, the film actually starts off in 1979, and then progresses and 
goes to uh, 1981. So pretty pretty big years in horror and 81, especially in the slasher uh, film genre. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, you have our lead character, uh, Amy, played by um, Brittany Beland, Beland, I believe is her name, um, who tragically uh, passed away um, a couple of years ago. Very sad. She was very young and very talented actress. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's very, very sad um, what ended up happening to her. She she unfortunately um, dealt with uh, depression and and. Um, essentially took her own life which is really really tragic and really sad and Mm. especially you you can see that she had a bright future she'd been in another uh film per se another couple i think she's done a couple horror films but um she was great in this movie she's a very charismatic lead um very like came off very sweet and naive which was you know per the course for her character um for this film but um like I said, I think the main thing with this film is aesthetic. Um, it really does feel, period, it really feels correct when it takes place. And that being the majority of the film takes place in 81. So it really, truly feels like a movie that was shot and took place in 1981. Mm-hmm. Um, down to the, the clothes that the uh, that the cast were wearing. Um, you can see the phones for the dial-up rotary phones. Because mm-hmm. uh, there was a an aspect where the killer would call and taunt um, the his victims. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very Black Christmas. This movie took a lot from Black Christmas. You can definitely tell. But there's mm-hmm. different different homages to, to different films in this in this movie too. Um, the main one being Black Christmas for sure, though. Mm-hmm. You can definitely tell. Um, uh, like I said, the killer is is unique in that he he's got like very hazy, like almost like white eyes and he doesn't, he doesn't wear a mask, unfortunately, which is, which is it'd be cool if he did. Um, mm-hmm. Also, you know, you get that expression in his face when he's, um, you know, stalking and, 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 and killing and, and stuff like that, which is, it's pretty, uh, pretty unique. Uh, he regret, you know, what's funny is I know we, you've covered this movie when we have, uh, when we did a episode on, I think it was a slasher summer slasher series when we did that um you talked about a movie called he knows you're alone mm-hmm. um the killer reminds me a lot of the killer in that movie um yeah. and in this movie he is he uses a main weapon which is a hammer so he um he he hammers a lot, a lot of his victims um or uses the hammer in a variety of ways but mm-hmm. um uh, the crazy thing is, man, he he's he's got this thing where another film that they took inspiration from, I'm sure, was Prom Night, where you know he takes the pictures from each each girl in the sorority house, and he really tries to target the girls in the sorority house, and that's about it. A mm-hmm. um, couple casualties along the way. It's got a fairly high body count, um, but he takes he takes their pictures and he marks on them and he puts Z's over over them like they're sleeping. That's his main thing is he wants to make them sleep. So um, it's a, it's a neat little character quirk for him. Um, And you have a, uh, you have a character who's essentially John Saxon's character in black Christmas, a detective who I swear is beat for beat. The same character as John Saxon's character. Um, It's very, very crazy actually how, how they Mm -hmm. pretty much mirrored um, his character from black Christmas. Um, but this movie's fun, man. It, it I, I watched it way back when, um, when it first came out. I remember having the that collector's edition uh, VHS, this really cool VHS DVD set um, that came with a little posted card that was signed by the director. Um, a lot of little cool stuff was in there. That's cool. You know, when I first saw this movie, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I loved the homages because that, that there was a, that was going on a lot in the. Uh, in the scene too, there was a lot of mm-hmm. homage. To the director's favorite films that they drew inspiration from, of course. So you're going to have mm-hmm. a couple of um, inspirational, you know, scenes or whatnot, or, or characters or something. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to add that to their film, uh, and it's going to be very, very natural because they're just fans. And mm-hmm. I mean, saying like these, any directors are fans making films for fans and for themselves. Yeah, uh, with what they would want to see. I think I think that's why I like independent films so much, is because there is paid homages all over these things. 
you know i love it yeah. and it's cool sometimes to sit back and kind of catch them and and know where it's they're kinda, going. It's, yeah it's kind of like an easter egg in a film yeah you know yeah, yeah and this movie's chock full of it man you you kind of um you see where certain scenes got their inspiration from and you're like oh it harkens back to this movie and then you think oh man they, they did that actually pretty well yeah i'm not i'm being honest with you um so this movie it, it seems i don't know if you've seen um house of the devil by ty west but this Love movie would make a perfect double feature with that movie it just in terms of like aesthetic and style alone i could see that both feeling like very very period correct films um, mm-hmm. and they don't skip a beat in that aspect. They, they really do a good job of really fine tuning all the small details as far as like characters, wardrobe, um, the house, how the house how the houses look interior wise in the eighties, um, the sorority mm-hmm. house itself, a lot of the characters with their, their, uh, dialogue and stuff like that. So, I mean, kudos to them. They really put their time and effort into this and really trying to get it correct. Mm-hmm. There's even a scene where they, they just have a dance number right in the middle of the movie. And yeah, it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. It's kind of like, oh, like you don't have to have that in there, but it's in <laughs> there. So, um, yeah. but most most kind of critique it and, and say it's a negative and stuff like that because it kind of draws you away from the movie and kind of takes you out of it for a minute, which I understand. It's one of my critiques as well. So I can't say that I'm not one of those people, but um for the majority of the movie, man, or for the for the most part of the running time, it's it's just a fun film to sit through if you really really enjoy eighty slashers or um, films that are you know homages to eighties um, mm-hmm. or just in general. Um, you have a lot of that in here, and it's it's really fun. Um, and like I said, it's a pretty decent body count too. So there's a there's a lot of different kills in this movie. Um, some of them are pretty graphic, and some of them are not so graphic. They're kind of like standard so you have oh, nice. a nice little mix of of things going on there but um this is a fun film man i always enjoyed it um like i said even way back when i first saw it probably when it first started coming out maybe like 2014 or something like that i may i may have seen it for the first time um or maybe a little earlier I'm not sure i can't remember when that um that set came out i don't know if it was a couple years after the film was wrapped and shot but um yeah I, I enjoy this one, man. I, I gave this one a uh, a four out of five on Letterbox. It's it's a very very good movie. It's the second uh, second time in the past year. I've seen, maybe third time in the past year I've seen it. So oh. it's yeah, it, it resonates with me, man. It's one of my favorite indie films um, of that that era, mm-hmm. uh, especially when we're talking about just strictly like a slasher film. This is definitely one of my favorites. Right on. That's awesome. And uh, I do remember, so I remember being, you actually turned me on to this film. Um, I think we were at a hunt. We were just at the flea market and Brian had a copy for sale. And you actually picked it up and handed it to me and said, dude, you need to buy this. So I remember that. Or not, no, maybe, maybe you picked it up for me. I'm not sure. I'm, th- I'm pretty sure either we were together or you, you picked it up for me. Um, one of the two, but I'm pretty sure we were together at the time. Um, but yeah, it was one of those films where you were like, I just remember you being crazy about this movie. And, uh, I watched it shortly after, uh, I got it. And then I've, I've watched it one more time since then. And I remember, um, the time period stuff that, that I think that's what resonated with me, the body count and the time period. Because yeah. I just couldn't believe how well they captured that. And that was like, I was really blown away. Yeah. Oh, and another thing I'd love to speak on in this film is the score. The score is really good, too. It's very ominous and very creepy. And, and mm-hmm. it takes place in the wintertime. It, it's, it's snowing. It's it, it feels cold. There's shots where the characters, some characters are outside and, the, and you can see their I, I, I remember having I remember having a feeling that it had a lot of similarity to Black Christmas. Oh, yeah. It's, de- it's definitely a film that I haven't watched in years. Um, I, I need to revisit it, definitely. It's good, man. You even have, um, like, the house mother for the sorority. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, she's very correct with her glasses and her wardrobe. <laughs> and it's, it's, I mean, it's, like I said, the attention to detail is, is, is very well done. Very well done. You can tell that the director, Justin Russell, 
and everybody behind the scenes and the crew took their time, really made sure that everything was as correct as they mm-hmm. could make it. And, you know, kudos to them for doing that. And I will say it, it definitely seemed cold when they were shooting certain scenes. Like you could see the, the breath and it just seemed people were shivering and you could just tell they shot yeah. in really, really cold conditions too. And not all that's fake. Like yeah. they actually took the time to shoot those scenes in, in really cold condition. I'm, I think this was shot in Ohio, probably around the winter time. So you know it's pretty pretty cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's good stuff, man. It's there was great. there was another movie that did that. Um, Mind's Eye. Yeah, Mind's Eye. Uh, I watched like the deleted scenes or behind the scenes stuff or whatever. And uh, who was that? Uh, Joe Spigos, I believe. Yeah, Joe Spigos. Um, yeah, he was he was talking about how cold it was while they were filming, and you could see it like it was just like the breath and everything, um, and I think like some 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 of the shots were like negative twenty something degrees outside or something like that, and they were out there filming in that crap. It's, Fuck that. Yeah, that's. that's too much. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't catch me out there. I'm from Florida, people. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh yeah, that's awesome, man. I I need to revisit that, so I, I definitely will. It's um, fun. It's so much fun, and, and it is. I do want to say it is on Tubi. So anybody interested in ooh. seeing it, um, I'm not trying to spoil anything. I mean, you know who the killer is pretty much out the gate. Like, they, yeah. they spoil that. So there's not really heavy spoilers in this movie. But if you are interested and it does kind of pique your interest, then definitely check it out on Tubi. Um, like I said, free. You can't can't beat that. Mm-mm. Not a film that's that's really 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 strong for an indie film. Yeah, that's awesome that it's there too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I went kind of the same route you did actually. I went from a director that um, I was uh, very fond of uh, in the indie scene around the same time. So this is a film from 2013, mm-hmm. um, but that is uh, Adam Albrecht's. The cemetery. Wow. So, this film, like, um, first and foremost, I don't know if it's out there for free to watch or anything like that. So, if you can get your hands on a copy and watch it, do it because, my opinion, it's besides Crossbear, this is hands down probably my favorite Adam Albert film. Um, and again, it's you know he's not doing much these days. Um, I think last time I talked with him. You know, he's he was working on a film that was last, I think, two years ago. I talked with him actually, but he uh, he, he was in post uh, production on a film that he had been working with for five years. I mean, just just think about that. Sorry, Corey. Just think about that for a minute. You were talking to him and you had correspondence with him two years ago. Yeah. You, know, like you guys had constant correspondence and we're talking. I remember you, you you guys had a quite a few conversations, and even me, I had a quite a few. Quite a few conversations with Adam back in the early days. Um, he's just yeah. a super friendly guy, really, really nice. I mean, but that's the cool thing about it. You're talking with these directors. Mm-hmm. Like, you're actually interfacing with them, and you're talking about, you know, what they got going on and, and you know, what the production was like on this film or that film or what it was mm-hmm. like shooting. Like, that's pretty damn cool. It that's was really I, neat, yeah. You, you can reach out to them, and you you feel comfortable reaching out to them because they're so personable and they're, they'll take the time to talk to you and, mm-hmm. and answer your questions and, and really appreciate your, your help. And it's just, it was so, so fun having just little moments like that where the directors take their time out of their day to, to chat with fans and stuff like that. So cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was pretty neat. I, I had talked to Adam a couple times, so that wasn't, that wasn't like, you know, a first time deal. Um, I talked to Adam back in the day and then, um, you know, throughout, you know, here and there, I lost contact with him for the longest time because he just kind of disappeared. But then I found him on Instagram and I was talking with him a little bit. Um, but yeah, Adam, Adam is, um, one of those people that I don't think he'll ever give up. Um, you know, in the, I guess his filmmaking career, um, you know, he still has hopes for future projects and stuff. Last time I talked with him, he was pretty adamant about it. I mean, he went from, I guess, you know, talking about his life story a little bit before I get into this movie. Um, but he, he was pretty much homeless, right? Mm-hmm. 
you know, so he followed his dream and, you know, no matter what he, he fought for it. And I think he, he, uh, was doing the burning, right? He did the burning. Was that his first film? I think it's the burnt burnt house. Yeah. The burnt house. Excuse me. The burning. Jeez. Burnt. (laughs) Um, I can't remember if it was sight or the burnt house. I think sight was technically his first film. Okay. Uh, Funny story. just real quick. Uh, when me and Adam were, were, bullshitting back in the day um i just so happened to be in a grocery store and i saw a copy of sight in there and i was like dude i text i messaged him and i was like i just found your movie in a grocery store and he's like <laughs> wait he's like which one and i said and i sent him a picture of sight and he's like dude he's like don't buy that it's a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like please and he's and i'm like dude i'm buying it like it's your movie i'm checking it out he's like all right, if you're going to buy it, I, I suggest you don't buy it. But if you do, please don't be harsh on me with it. I'm like, man, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go in and watch the movie. So th- that just goes to show you, like, the interaction that I had with him when we were when we were talking and stuff like that. I'll never forget that. That was one of my favorite Adam Albrand stories. <laughs> my, well, my, my favorite was when I was actually talking with him, like I said, about two years ago. As he was talking to me, he kept apologizing because all his cats were like in heat or something. He it sounded like he had thirty cats in his house, but but they were all going crazy. And he was like, "Oh my god, they're making all kinds of weird sounds." <laughs> yeah, he's a character. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so and one of the things that I really liked about Adam is like there was a couple times where. Even this film, this film was a, I think, a Christmas gift from my wife, and um, there was only a thousand copies made of this film, or, or this Blu-ray release, shall I say? Um, but he actually personalized the inside of it, and due to community guidelines, I much rather not put that on here. So sorry, folks, but but it is personal to me. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah, he goes. Uh, he goes on his artwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my wife made the made the bad decision of telling him that it was a Christmas gift. And so he wrote a few things about Jesus in here. Yeah. yeah. And given the fact that this movie is really about demons and stuff like that, it kind of goes hand in hand, I guess. (laughs) So, yeah, so it's about, um, so this film, sorry for rambling so much, guys. I, I digress. I digress. (laughs) I digress. Um, no, so uh, yeah, um, it's about the this uh, couple of uh, filmmakers who um, travel to the woods, and then I I'm, I got kind of confused because um, it was like they were uh, like I, I guess like paranormal investigators or whatever, yeah. um, but they I guess they were fake paranormal investigators or something. Um, yeah, and then. Um, I think Bill's character, right? I believe his name's Bill. Um, uh, J.D. Brown's character. Um, he brings a girlfriend along who's kind of like a goody two-shoe type. You know, she doesn't. it doesn't seem like she does anything wrong. Um, and pretty much she is, I guess, uh, a medium or something. And she was really channeling it. And they were in the woods, you know, in this old forgotten cemetery that just wasn't supposed to be there or exist anymore. And, um, they were there pretty much doing what they do. Um, they were making fake filming, you know, making fake paranormal shit, but she was being serious about it. But lo and behold, um, they get encountered by a demon and, uh, it actually, um, it actually enters into, uh, one of your other main characters, uh, played by uh, Natalie Jean. What's her What's her name? Do you remember her name? Natalie Jean. Oh, is it just Natalie Jean? Okay. Um, but yeah, and um, she goes crazy. She starts fucking these guys up bad, and pretty much there's just no killing this um, demon other than chopping its head off. Which I really love that because um, in one in one part um, she gets really messed up by the uh, by uh, Bill. I think it was by Bill and uh, you see her actually grab a hatchet and start chopping her own head off to, to kill, I guess her vessel so that she, the demon would possess somebody else. Um, just, just a wild ride. Um, very in your face, gory as hell. 
um, sexy as hell because there's there's a lot of nudity, there's a lot of blood and guts. Um, some of the stuff is just pretty gross. Like there's one scene where uh, at one point they start chopping um, Natalie Jean's legs off with a hatchet, and I mean it looks real. Um, and then there's like a disembowelment uh, scene. Um, just all kinds of craziness. Um, one of the things that I really liked about this film, though, is um, you do actually see a couple scenes of Adam Auburn in the film as well. Uh, I think that was due to um, somebody just didn't show up during filming day, so he just stood in as a, as like a monk or whatever. Yeah, um, he was a monk, I remember that. Yeah, but... It, it was just a, it's a fun it's a fun um film too because it, it is played out a lot you know you do see this type of stuff but they they went a little bit further which i really like because at one point in time in the early years of settlement in in america you know you had these settlements coming in and pushing christianity on indians you know well during this time the indians were getting possessed by demons and so it was just it was a battle of good and evil, I guess, in this uh, settlement. And, um, you know, it was just really, really bloody and gory back in the day. And it got to the point where I think um, they were they were at, at that point started just torturing people. So it was kind of a little play on kind of like the Salem Witch Trials, too. Like, yeah, you know, it was just it was pretty much just, um, I guess, a way to murder, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. It was, a, it was a very very fun film to watch. I, I, it was good when I watched it in the big, you know the first time I watched it, and still good now. I, I love it, and I, I think even you and I sat down and watched it at one point, and it, it just kind of made an impression on both of us. Like Adam Auburn knows what he's doing behind the camera. I wish he would get back behind the camera and do it more often. You know, when I think of that film, I think of high octane, just balls to the wall, just going for everything, and just oh, nonsense. Yeah. And, and then, you know, you know, it's an Adam Albert film with some of the dialogue, you know, oh. like <laughs> there was a scene where um, uh, uh, I forget the, the guy's name, but the, the, the head filmmaker or whatever. He was like, so how is your girlfriend? And, and the one guy turns around, and he sticks his fingers to his nose and he goes, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, for you. that's Adam Albert. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, just the, the, the most raunchiest dialogue you can imagine. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it was fun. That's a fun film. So yeah, um, uh, I give that four stars. Nice. Um, like Same I said, way. it's it, 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 in that time, and you know, and that's that heyday that we talk about. That heyday, that big boom of of because uh, I think at the first the first film um, of Adam Auburn that I got turned on to, which you turned me on to, uh, was Cross Bear. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I was like, I got to nab up as many of his films as possible. So I think I got it? all of his films except one, and that's Sight. Sight, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, think I think I have just about every every film he's done mm, now. Um, I, I don't have Hunters. Oh, you don't have Hunters? Okay. No. And that's you. going for a crazy amount of money on Amazon right now. So. Yeah, crazy. That Massacre video title. I think it's out of print. Mm. Um, but yeah, Adam's a super unique guy. Um just very funny like if you just talk to him outside of the industry and stuff like that and just one-on-one -on -one with him and stuff like that very funny it's always mm -hmm. cracking jokes. very very upbeat um i'll never forget that video where he posted you know saying hey it's because of you guys i'm actually living not in my car anymore and it was he was super emotional about it but that was him just being true to the fans and letting them know like hey because of you guys and your support i'm actually i actually have a house and i actually have like I have things in the house and, and mm -hmm. he's can't thank you guys enough for everything you've done, all the support and this, this and that. Man, when you see stuff like that, it just it just it really hits oh, yeah. you really hits you hard. And I mean it I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the conversations we've had. Um just he's he's been probably the most influential personally, the most influential indie filmmaker for mm -hmm. us. Because yeah. we've talked to him more, we've we've seen his journey. He's he's led us into his journey and what he's uh, you know what he's went through. Mm -hmm. We've seen. I mean, we well, pretty much all his films. I mean, it's, go, it's well, it, it it tells you what kind of a person Adam really is. Because there was a there was a 
I remember there being a video where he was uh, trying to get like a fundraiser going where he, I think he was selling memorabilia and, and even his movies to try and raise money for a guy that had lost his entire house in a fire who was, who was in the uh, group on Facebook, you know? And I yes. mean, that's just, he never met the guy. I think he talked a couple times, like we talked, you know, with him. Um, and then just, just to go off, you know, go out on a limb and do something like that for somebody. That's, that's pretty cool. That speaks volumes, man. Mm-hmm. It really does. It shows what kind of person you are. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's good, good heart, man. Good soul. Yeah. We need to get him on the show. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it before. Um, even when, you know, you were talking to him and I yeah. lost, you know, unfortunately I lost um, correspondence with him because I don't have any of the social media he does. So um, I kind of lost track with him. I was mainly keeping up with him on Facebook and we'd message each other and sometimes I'd call him and sometimes he'd call me and, you know, that was always cool and stuff like that. But just when he, you know, he's gotten into a different role now and this, this and that. So he's, it's been harder and harder for me to talk, but I was so psyched when you had a chance to talk to him and, um, and see, you know, what, what he, what he'd been up to and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I'm glad got in touch with him i'm glad he's doing better i'm glad he's doing pretty good um as far as i know now um like you said it's been a couple of years so hopefully he's still doing good um right. but yeah he's definitely the most uh influ- not inf- well influential in a, in a sense yeah well, for I, sure. I, most I think it was after this film we actually sat down and wrote our film yeah so i mean that that says a lot and he you know him and i talked about that too well, I remember. I remember, when we, I remember when we saw Crossbear, and that movie really, really resonated with me. Wanting to be an indie indie director as well, it, mm-hmm. it kind of. I was like, I want to do this, just like that. Like that's what I want to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, it's like I said, he's he's the most personable indie filmmaker for me. No, no question. Um, I've had conversations with quite a few filmmakers in the indie scene, and luckily, I've gotten a chance to do that, but. Not like that with Adam, man. With Adam, it was a completely different thing. Oh, yeah. 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 But, yeah, I've, I've, always, I've always enjoyed talking with him. He's a funny cat, too. Really good guy. Yeah. But, yeah. You got, uh, got anything else uh, to add? No, I'm, I don't, man. Um, Justin <laughs> Russell, if you're out there, please, please make another film. Come back. Come back. Do something. Even if it's not a horror film, just make a film. We you know, <laughs> see you do something, man. You're, you're like I said, you're a talent, and and Adam as well. Like Adam, thank you for for everything, man. Thank you for um, good memories and stuff, and checking out movies and and talking movies. I, I me and him would talk movies and stuff like that. We talk mm-hmm. about bands. We talk about just about anything. I mean, he he was definitely a uh, he was definitely a fan of the metal scene, the, the horror scene, he, he, through and through. Like, there was no fake in that guy. He was 100% legit and, and real. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I miss those conversations, man. I, I, I need to get back in touch with him and stuff like that. Maybe we can talk again and rekindle a, uh, you know, when we talked about metal and stuff like that. We talked about metal a lot. We talked probably about metal more than we talked about horror. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, just getting back with him would be cool. Um and and maybe getting him on the show one of these days doing like a like a retrospective on his films with him in attendance that would be sick man that would be pretty cool i think i'm gonna hit him up and see if we can get him on here that would be sick dude definitely oh yeah (laughs) all right man well you ready to land it yeah i think so all right brother Well, folks, we appreciate you watching another episode of the Midnight Monster Corner, and we hope that you enjoyed our reviews of these two films, and we hope that you can go check them out. We hope we didn't ruin them for you either. I'm saying hope a lot. Sorry. Um, (laughs) But make sure that you uh, head over to our Facebook group where we are uh, a lot more social other than our YouTube channel. Make sure you tell your friends and uh, you like, share, and subscribe this um, episode as well we're uh, we're definitely seeing a lot of buzz happening on uh, youtube we thank you uh yep. one of our videos almost has eight thousand views that's insane that is crazy yeah considering where we are and when we started and this is snap for a video to have that many views and mm-hmm. man that's, that's almost mind-blowing to me it really is not it's insane it. oh, wow. <laughs> it's insane uh, but we thank you guys so much and uh, just keep yep. us going Keep Thank us growing, you. and that's and you guys are what's keeping us going. So 
We appreciate it. Absolutely. Definitely. Couldn't have said it myself, man. Yeah. But like I said, guys, just head over to our Facebook group and uh, join the conversation. We have a blast in there. But with that, later, guys. Later.